Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the channel and welcome to yet another conference. I wanted to talk to you all about something that um, I have uh, been noticing for a large portion of my adult life. And I've always felt that it was very stupid. <laughs> um, I've seen a lot of people do it. Um, a lot of people, I, I don't know, I guess they're just open like that. But I want to talk today about people who bring their personal business into the workplace. I have been witnessing that type of behavior for most of my adult life. People who come into the workplace and they think that they have friends. They think that everybody is their friend. They come there to make friends. They have not elevated from a high school mentality. And they continue to operate in the adult world the same way they did in high school or junior high or elementary school. There is some type of maturity that should have taken place after graduation or for those who did not graduate, maybe you got your GEDs or maybe some of you dropped out. But after high school, there is some level of maturity, some level of elevation that people should have obtained and left foolishness behind. It reminds me of the scripture that Paul wrote about, you know, when he was a, I don't know, I can't quote it, but about when he was a child, he thought as a child, he behaved as a child, so forth and so on. But when you become a man or a woman, I would say, you know, you behave as an adult. Now, of course, Paul said when he became a man, because Paul is a man. But anyway, I have always felt that was a huge mistake to bring your personal business into the workplace. You know, I personally, I, um, I'm just going to tell it like it is. Anytime that you have come up in a small area and the type of area where everybody tries to be in everybody else's business and what they don't know they'll make up and what they think they know they don't know and when you come into the workplace and uh, if you are working with those types of people they will always try to say oh well that person used to date such and such or I used to hang out with this person or we used to go partying at the club. Or we used to do this. It, or or they try to go down a whole list of whoever you dated. Or if you were married or divorced. Or who your people were. Who just, you know, like they just want to give people the rundown. And that's why a lot of people, you know, if they grew up in small areas. They don't like to work with people that um, they grew up in the area around. The people may not have necessarily been a part of your lives. But they just don't like that. Because one thing about people, they always want to try to give other people what they feel is the rundown about you. And, you know, growing up, for those of you that have grown up in small areas, you know, you may experience that more so than people who grew up in the big city or things of that nature. Um, oftentimes, for those of you, and I'm just talking, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm dealing with that, but I, I, I'm going to say that I've seen that, you know, I've seen it in the past you know people who um they may have known somebody that you dated and then they want to come on the job and say oh well he used to date her or she used to date him or you know and oftentimes you know we call those types of people busybodies you know they're always somewhere trying to feel as if they are giving someone else the 411 on you and nine times out of ten the person doesn't even know you like that or even if it is somebody that you were like hung out with, a party with back in the day. You know, they still don't know you like that. You know, and uh, I, I just cannot stand those types of people. You know, and I grew up in an area where, um, you know, everybody tried to mind everybody else's business. And, you know, it was a, a very, um, it's a very sick area. You know, um, it, I, I, I didn't like it. And uh, the area didn't like me. You know, the area that I came up in, you know, none of us have ever liked each other. And we still don't like each other. And we will never like each other. But, um, and that's all right with me. Hey, hallelujah, praise God. I don't lose any sleep over it. But 
for this particular area, I think that they are trying to clean it up now and bring in a different uh, type of people. Because, you know, a lot of times it's not the physical. Uh, uh, what, I, what can I put it? Not the physicalness of an area that makes it bad. It's the type of people that live in the area or that hang out in the area. You know, and uh, I know the type of area that I came up in, it was a type, you know, people that had bad reputations and were violent and love to fight and shoot. They would migrate toward the area because that's the type of area it was. You know, it was like it attracted whatever it was, whatever was the reflection of itself. And then, you know, it had clubs and things that people were being hurt at. And, you know, just, oh, my gosh. I mean, you know, what? I wasn't even going to go this direction, but I'm going to say this. I remember one night being at a club and I should not have been there because first of all I had nothing in common with those people that were there I didn't do the things that, that they did you know and I didn't have any friends in this area so I'm and now that I'm thinking about what the world was I doing there <laughs> you know but anyway I think sometimes you know when you're young you feel like you're missing out on something only to later find out you weren't missing out on anything you know you should have just stayed at home and popped your popcorn and watched your movies you know but anyway I can remember being at this club and they called it um I think they called it the shack. It was a hole in the wall. Okay, so as you know, there is no way that somebody like me had any business at this place. But you know, me and my nosy self. So I was at this place called the shack. Well, it's not called the shack. We called it the shack because that's what it was. <laughs> hole in the wall. A get up, okay? And um, I remember there was this female. And she had to urinate. And she squatted down behind a car and she began to urinate right there in the parking lot of the club. And I told her, I said, there are men walking by. And she said, well, it ain't nothing they ain't never seen before. And you know what? <laughs> After that, I was, I didn't know what else to say. I was speechless. When she said that, I'm thinking, you know what? I don't, you know, I, I just, you know, I didn't know what to think. Other than this woman is, she is nasty. That's what you call a whore. She was out there urinating in the parking lot behind somebody's car. And these men are walking by and she didn't even care. And so now I'm thinking, what the world was I doing out there around those kind of people? <laughs> well, I wasn't hanging with them. I was, I, to be honest, I don't even recall that night in depth i just remember that one event sticking out in my mind because you know you're thinking how in the world can you be so common how can you be so filthy how can you be so immoral you know and uh it just i, I don't know this type of that type of area was just it was just a bad area you know it was a, it was a lot of violence a lot of fighting a lot of cheating a lot of adultery a lot of just people uh going with each other's boyfriends uh people uh having babies by each other's boyfriends and stuff like that. It's just a very bad area, you know. And um, a lot of times in life, you feel like you're missing out on something when you're young. You feel like, oh, everybody's out there. They're having fun and this and that and the third. And then when you get out there, you realize that's not even what it is. So your imaginations can set you up to make you think that something is something that it's not. You know, you realize, you know what, I should have just stayed at home and like I said, pop your popcorn, uh, order your pizza or whatever, and uh, watch a movie or something, you know. But anyway, I just wanted to, I know I went kind of left field, but I just wanted to bring that uh, into the conversation because, you know, oftentimes, you know, it would be the people that have lived the roughest lives. They'll be the ones uh, all up in the workplaces and stuff uh, trying to give people what they want, want to be the 411 on you and they're lying and you know, they just they just want you to look bad because they have lived bad. You know, so they want everybody else to to look bad. You know, and we all deal with those kinds of people. And that's why I say, you know, if I were you guys, I would never bring my personal business up in the workplace. You know, because it and also just be mindful of the type of people that you interact with. You know, because not everybody is your friend. You know, and a lot of times there are those of you. Now, I'm not saying this is my experience, you know, but I'm just saying there are those of you out there. You think people are your friends and they're bringing your business into the workplace. And if you want to know why everybody knows every time you have a fight with your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, it's because of that two faced friend that you got that's bringing your business into the workplace, talking about you to people 
that have nothing to do with your lives. Okay, so just be careful of who you call a friend, who you confide in, who you let in, who you allow into your houses, who you allow into your circles, your personal lives, because you know that's where I draw the line with people. You know, um, one thing I don't allow, you know, you don't put your mouth in my business, or you don't put your mouth in what you think is my business. Business, I just don't play that with nobody. I wasn't raised that way. You know, I was raised by uh, somebody who uh, was very private. You know, they didn't like everybody in their business, and I'm the same way. You know, and uh, the worst thing anybody could ever do is try to put their mouth in my relationship or if I was married or in my business because, you know what, somebody like that, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. You know, and, uh, I, I the, you know, I will not be holding back because I just don't play that. And I know a lot of times, you know, especially for those of you, if you have a lot of enemies and things, you know, they'll try to um, go around and find out who you dated and... Uh, well, what did you do on uh, New Year's and what did you do on your birthday? And did you ever go to the club? And if you went to the club, who were you talking to? Who did you dance with? And, you know, just stupid mess like that so that they can come into the workplace and say, oh, well, you know, I know about him. You know, he used to party at the club, club 69. He used to party at club. I'm just making that up. I don't know. Uh, they used to party or he used to date this girl. You know, she um, shot his, uh, I don't know, other girlfriend or. He shot his, whatever, you know, just people who just don't have lives and they just think they're giving people the rundown on you and they're not. And, you know, they're all in the supervisor's faces talking about, oh, this, because see what they want is they want substance. They just want something to talk about because they don't have lives. And I, you know what I have, I don't hang up on the people like that, but I know of people like that that are in the workplaces. You know, they're always somewhere spreading lies and trying to say this, that, and the third. When they need to go somewhere and sit down and shut up. And then if they ever get a peanut gallery, oh my gosh, now, you know, you know what you've got now, my sisters? Now you've got a pack of whores looking at you pointing the finger and you're not one. Now you've got a, a, a pack of uh, penis licking sluts looking at you and you're not one. And they're looking at you pointing the finger. You know, these tramps need, really need to go sit down. These traps really need to go sit down. And for you fellas out there, um, you know, you when you um, allow people to get too close in your lives and they're taking your business into the workplace, you know, now you've got a bunch of people looking at you, pointing the finger at you. And, you know, and a lot of them, you know, they, they probably live a rougher life than you could ever think to live. You know, so I just want you all to just, you know, be private in your lives. I mean, I'm not telling you what to do. It's just a word of advice for those who want to take it. Those who do not, don't take it. You know, it's not going to hurt me one way or the other. This channel is for people that want help and guidance. And they can't get it anywhere else. You know, and I know, I, I'm not bragging, but I'm the type of chick. I've got my stuff together. I've got my stuff together in the Lord. You know, I know how to make um, intelligent decisions. You know, so I'm basically just trying to share the knowledge with other people people you know that saying each one teach one you know so i'm just trying to help somebody out there that may need some guidance you know but anyway i was just saying i, I was just thinking about you know people that bring their business into the workplace and how you know and we all know you know you've got people in the workplace from all walks of life and they're all in a lot of different workplaces they're always trying to keep a bunch of mess stirred up a bunch of lies, a bunch of deceptions, and it's it's a lot of jealousy. And I'm just talking about various workplaces in general. You know, it's a lot of lies, a lot of deceptions. You've got a lot of people in there. They're bipolar. They're schizophrenic. They need to be in mental institutions. Um, a lot of people have disorders. They have um, compulsive behaviors. Uh, it, you're just dealing with people from all walks of life, okay? So you need to just be mindful of what you are around in various work environments and keep your business your business. If you and your spouse has a fight, that's between you and your spouse. That doesn't need to leave the house. If you and your boyfriend have a fight, that's between you and your boyfriend. It doesn't need to leave the house. If you and your wife or your girlfriend, you have a disagreement, even if you two break up, that doesn't need to leave your house. You need to keep that private until you reconcile, if you so desire. The people at your place of work, they do not need to be involved in your personal lives. And you know, nothing makes me any sicker than for somebody to try to 
give me a leading comment. And by that, I mean, they'll say something to try to see my reaction because see, now they think you're going to pick your guts out to them about your life. Think again, think again, because you know what? I don't put nobody in my business. And if I find out that I'm dealing with somebody and they don't respect my privacy and they don't respect their own privacy, that person will be cut off so quick. Oh my God, in a flash, in a New York minute, they will be cut off for good and forever. I don't play that crap. And I, I know, you know, they're, then, you know, I know there are people out there. You're very open with your lives. I'm not saying you're right or wrong, but I'm just saying that a lot of times I just don't believe that everything that goes on your, in your lives should be brought into the workplace. I just, you know, some people are very open with their lives. You know, if, if, if they are, that's fine or whatever. I'm just not one of those people. And I know I'm the type of person, you know, I am. Um, if I feel somebody has disrespected me or if they've tried to um, get involved in my relationship or my marriage or whatever, you know, I'm just saying this as, as, as an example. Um, I'm coming for somebody like that. I'm coming for somebody like that. I don't care who it is because, you know, I feel like I'm the business of the people that I want to involve in my life, in my personal life. And if it's somebody that I don't want to involve in my personal life, then I'm none of their business. You know, and I know a lot of times it could be like people that either you hung with back in the day or people that they know or whatever, you know, it, it could be, it could be whatever. I know me personally, um, I've always been a private person. I've always, there were people that I hung around, but I never discussed my life with them. You know, I never discussed my life or whatever. And one thing you will learn early on is that if you have a boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, uh, don't discuss it with people. Because you know what? You will learn that even as a, a, a youth. You will learn from that. Trust me. Especially if you have like, for those of you out there that have girlfriends. I mean like sister girls. You will learn early on. Don't tell your girlfriends um, your business about your man. If you two have a fight, you have a disagreement. Because you know what? Later on in life, and that same whore will be somewhere trying to turn what you said that was innocent into some type of slander against you. Oh, yeah, girl, back in the day, her man this or, or his woman this or, you know, see, because just because you're friends with somebody doesn't mean you'll always be friends with them. You know, I'm just putting that out there. I'm not talking from personal experience, but I'm just putting that out there that you all need to be mindful of the people that you call friends presently and currently because they may not always be your friends. OK, so be mindful of the things that you're telling people about your lives and your relationships and your marriages. You know, because you never know. You just may end up in the workplace with those people. And this thing, you know, you're the center topic. You know, you you are the topic of interest. You know, so people are always going to be your friends. And then, you know, you do have those true blues out there that will always be your friend. You know, but um, you just never know what you're getting in life, even as it pertains to relationships. So you just have to be mindful of who people are or who they could become, whether a positive or a negative. Okay? So, um, anyway... Because who they are may be negative now, you know, and you don't know it. Oh, that's what I'm trying to say. I, I Sometimes I don't word it, word it exactly how I'm thinking it, but you know what I'm trying to say. It may be somebody that, you know, you think they're your friend now, but they might be an enemy on down the road. That's what I'm trying to tell you, you know, so just be mindful of the things that you do. Um, that's pretty much all I have to say. I think, I uh, can't think of anything else, you know, uh. Just keep your lives private, what I would advise you to do. I'm not telling you what to do, but keep it private. Keep your business out of the workplaces. Um, if you decide to have friends in the workplace, you better know if they're your friends or not. Uh, you better have your boundaries with them. Uh, you better let them know, okay, I've accepted you into my circle as my friend, but you don't take my business into the workplace. You know, that's where I draw the line. I'll, I'll cut you off in a heartbeat. I'm just saying, you have to really put your foot down with people and let them know. You know, it's not going to happen. And I, another thing I want to stress, um, for a long time, you know what? Now I, I, I understand where celebrities are coming from. It's like uh, how they can just cut people off. As for, um, and I'm talking about the ones that are private. And um, how could, they can just cut people off that might could say the smallest little thing that they don't want out there because they don't want it to get into the press. I understand I understand now because you know what? If a person will open their mouth about something small, 
they'll open their mouth about something that maybe that celebrity doesn't want told. You see what I'm saying? So the key is, if I don't authorize you to share it with anybody, keep your mouth shut. And I think that's how a lot of people who are famous and they are very private people, I think that's how they think. It's like, you know, if you are my friend, you don't discuss me with anybody, you know, but me or whoever's in our or in their celebrity circle or whatever. Because if it goes outside the circle, it gets to the press, it gets in the papers and so forth and so on. So I understand people and their need to protect their privacy. And even for people who are not celebrities, meaning you're not famous or, you know, not to that level, you have to protect your privacy and you have to know the types of people that are migrating around you, that are migrating towards you and surrounding your lives. You know, you can't be friends with everybody and you can't allow everybody into your circle. And I would just say be with like-minded individuals. If you know you're dealing with somebody and their life is an open book, then you better believe they're going to try to make yours one. But if you surround yourselves with people that are very private, nine times out of ten, that might be a true blue. Okay? So that's just a little word of advice for you all. Okay? And God bless you all until next time. Okay? Bye-bye.